Yesterday was a great day for Texas. Um, it was a great day, so we just need to make this a great weekend. We need to be a great team today. We need to be connected. We need to be great on the bench, and we need to have fun playing the game. That's all I'm interested in. Okay, let's go. If you a do that, day you ago, the Texas men upset North Carolina. Today, the Texas women play the role of favorite against the Stanford Cardinals. Stanford working on a little revenge as well as after Texas won on the road a year ago in OT. Logan Galindo here with seven-time WNBA All-Star Katie Smith. Katie, here are the starting five for Texas. Four guards and Amani in the middle. For Stanford, they are starting five juniors. And with Stanford, Lee Lee Thompson averaging 19.3. She dropped 28 on the Longhorns last year. And for Texas, Amani Boyette in the middle. Coming off a Big 12 co-player of the week these are her numbers against the two ranked foes this year and she is putting up great work right now Karen Aston has had to go into a little bit of a scramble mode with a late change in the starting five for the Stanford Cardinal as they will start Kylie Johnson in place of Kaylee Johnson as Kylie is making her first start in more than a year at center court for the tip it's Amani Boyette head to head against Kylie Johnson. An opening tip controlled by Texas. Selena Rodrigo running the point for the Horns, wearing the gray. Impis Davenport tries to go glass. Amani Boyette with a rebound. And after the miss, Davenport pulls down another offensive board. Even though Texas only has, they have four guards on the floor, they are a great team rebounding. And you'll notice the player playing the four, Brianna Taylor. She is undersized for that spot. And you can tell Stanford, they like to ice wing pick and rolls. Keep them on one side. Another miss, but this time Stanford ends the defensive possession with the rebound by Erica McCall. Texas primarily a man-to-man -man team. Coach Aston has dabbled with the zone as of late. And letting it fly from distance, it's Carly Samuelson. You know, these two teams have a little different styles. Stanford takes about 24 threes a game, while Texas only takes about 13. They have to get out on on balls to guard shooters. Great matchup with the three ball as Stanford enters as the ninth best team in terms of three-point field goal percentage. Texas with the fourth best defense in that regard. Texas with the turnover. Stanford trying to turn it into points. Thompson into the lane. The kick to no one in particular. Back-to-back -back turnovers. Tara Vandervin. Season number 30 as a head coach of the Stanford Cardinal. She got her five-mile jog in this morning. She's ready to go, Katie. Yes, she is. Impressive. Uh, you know, discipline from the top to the bottom. But Tara is uh, something special. And, you know, I've known her for a lot, a lot of years. And she's very interested to see what she gets from her Cardinal because it's been two weeks since Stanford was on the court as they had that university-mandated two-week layoff because of the final exams travel for Texas and we've had three straight possessions in with turnovers and with that break there they've been 13 and 3 off of that two week break for exams so quite a bit of success from that and this is a tough one to open up with and they have Tennessee next Samuelson called for the travel we heard Karen Aston off the top of the show Getting the Longhorns ready to go. She's in her fourth season as a head coach at Texas, and this has been one of those steady rebuilding jobs here at the University of Texas. She told me a day ago she's not sure if Texas is a top five team right now, but no doubt in her mind they are top ten. Bree Taylor to the basket. She's going to the line. Great attack by Taylor. Just understanding, taking the hit. Player was inside the restricted zone, so she got the foul. And that is the 5-9 four in the starting five for this Texas team. Taylor gets the first of two and the Longhorns are on the board. Second attempt off the mark, Bacall with the rebound. 
You're going to see Stanford's post do a lot of on-ball screening, a lot of dribble ats, a lot of the facilitating. Thompson pulling up, does not go down. Boyette with the rebound. One of the top rebounders in college hoops this season. And really ever since arriving here on the 40 acres. You see again, Stanford forcing them into the half. A nice floater by McCarty. McCarty coming off a career high 23 point performance against Arkansas Little Rock. And they needed all 23 of those as that was a sluggish performance for this Texas team. Katie, what do you think this game is gonna come down to? You know, for the keys of the game with Stanford, really taking care of the basketball, not allowing Texas to get out and run, and again, denying the dribble to penetration. They force you into penetration, but it's more your help that needs to be there and not overhelp. And obviously, Texas defended three-point shooters, and they make good decisions when they attack the hole. Do you have a shot? Take your shot early. Don't end up with a charge or find the open man. Thompson, another miss. Boyette with the rebound. Davenport. Same angle as Brooke McCarty, and there's back-to-back -back hoops for Texas. They're up five to three. On the previous possession, McCarty picked up her first foul. McCall, Stanford just can't get the shot to fall after that early three. McCarty, nice move in an open court, slipping past Lee Thompson. And Texas with a 7 3 lead. McCarty's got four. Nice feed. With, with the shooters of Stanford, when the big sets the pig, Boyette has to step out and hedge to take away the shot, and the big is going to be able to get openings on the roll. Rihanna Roberson setting up McCall there. Roberson, 20 assists this season, second on the Stanford team. Davenport, the drive and dump, swatted by McCall. Wide open lane to the bucket. Thompson finds the mark. And Thompson is on the board. I just saw Coach Ashton yell, hedge. She wants her bigs to hedge on the guards. Stanford, their main weapon are their guards. Davenport for three. No good. Ball comes loose. Taylor corrals it. Texas will slow it down. Two very good defensive teams here. Actually, both enter tied 15th nationally in field goal percentage defense at 32.8%. 10 on the shot clock. Davenport, another try. Same result. Rebound, Atlanta Smith. Thompson, pull up, Stanford runs back into the lead. It's nine to seven. And again, when those set on ball picks, somebody has to be there with these type of shooting guards. They can knock those down. Somebody has to put pressure on them. Davenport thought about it. Feed to Boyette, going to work. Shot off the glass, up and over. Aaron McCall. And Boyette with the early bucket, her first two of the game. Too strong on the three from Roberson. Another floater from McCarty, and another hit. And Brooke McCarty, three and three from the field, and two floaters from the same spot. And those are a lot harder to do than it looks right now that McCarty did. And everybody's getting a little winded right now. No break in play. Got to push through. McCarty, rebound. Davenport. Got it. Smith, the response, too strong. Turn around by Taylor. No good. Samuelson in transition. 
Slips the pass, threading the needle to Smith. Can't get it to go. Smith has to take that hit, take the contact, go into the defender and finish strong, or at least get to the free throw line. Smith only a 46% shooter from the free throw strike. Fast pace, first quarter to this point. Rodrigo, three, rebound, ripped down by Smith. Pushed up to McCall, and the Texas run is done. And watch McCall all night. She loves to rim run, rim to rim, and get out. And right now, especially with no stoppage in play, people are, are really exhausted. And whoever's got the mental toughness to push may get a couple easy buckets. McCall has... Five double-doubles this season. Seven in the NCAA is Davenport. Going back to her bread and butter, that's attacking the basket. Great read, understand. Defense all had their heads turned, occupied one four high, and she took it to the hole. Entertaining first half, to say the least. Brooke McCarty getting after it. Six points in the early going. Texas up by four. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by... Audi, challenge all givens. Brooke McCarty, the sophomore guard for Texas, is coming off her best performance for the burnt orange. She's up for the same old tricks. Six points, two of them off those runners going baseline. Logan Lindo back here with Katie Smith. Big issue though for Texas. Brooke McCarty just picked up foul number two, so she's on her way to the bench. Looking at the score right now though, how's Texas managed to open up this lead? I think their decision making has been good. Some of the keys to the game. I think they're taking shots early, not getting into the defense too far, and finding the open person. Rebound has been a factor for Texas. Came into this game. 10th nationally in rebound margin. They've got a 10-5 edge there. There's going to be an opportunity for a three-point play. Aggressive take to the hoop from Marta Snezik. Just into the game. Lots of movement by Stanford right here. You get almost like a scissor cut. They do a lot through their post at the elbow. They're the ones handling it, and the guards are making cuts. The post players, though, have to make decisions. you got to have those type of post players, and obviously Stanford has been practicing that and do a really nice job of that possession. Snezik now 5-5 five of five from the stripe on the season. And Stanford pulls within one. Kelsey Lang now into the game with Brady Sanders. And one of the standout freshmen for Texas as well, Jordan Hosey. Hosey. I wasn't aware that was her game. But with confidence, wouldn't have never known. Yeah. First three attempt, first three-point make of her career. And great job, Texas, again. Stanford in the lane, help side, help side, help side. Skip it, step into the shot, and knock it down. Talked to Coach Aston about her freshman, Jordan Hosey and LaShawn Higgs, and she said, typical freshman at this point, but the difference is Higgs started off very hot. She's hit the wall. But Hosey really picking up steam, and they believe it. If she can really rebound, she's going to be effective today in the Big 12. There's a smile across the face of Empress Davenport. She now has eight points. Feels very comfortable. Looks very comfortable right now, handling the basketball and taking shots. Texas has hit six of their last eight. Final 40 seconds of the first quarter. Going to get a foul on Kelsey Lane. This week on Monday Night Football, Eli Manning, Odell Beckham Jr., and the New York Giants head to South Beach for a battle with Ryan Tannehill and the Dolphins. Miami will be wearing classic throwback unis. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 6 Eastern, followed by Giants-Dolphins at 8.15, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. So Kelsey Lay, big off the bench, picks up her first foul. Roberson, no good. Turnover, Selena Rodrigo. 17 seconds left. Stanford can hold for the final shot of the first quarter. For a high pick and roll, 
A little bit of spacing. Thompson's gonna take it. Got it. Good decision, good result. Rodrigo, no attempt. As time runs out in the first quarter, an entertaining one to say the least. We've got a tight, high-scoring ball game. Forget about that defense we were talking about. Texas up on the Cardinal by four going into the second quarter. Lily Thompson and all her teammates here at Stanford, really the true definition of a student athlete. You mentioned two week break for final exams. Good reason why you had to have that type of break because serious stuff, academics at Stanford. And the final in sign language, final in computer science. Look at this. We're final in national security and technology. She had to write a policy paper to advise the president on action after a hypothetical cyber attack on the U.S. by the Chinese government. How would you approach that? What would be your advice? It's not really up my alley, but just sometimes we forget that they really are student athletes and have a lot on their plate and they're balancing it, especially, you know, at a school like Stanford. But everybody got to balance all the intricacies of, of class, tutors, and then practicing, trying to get better on the, on the court as well. There's some programs that stress academics and you go a little deeper and the stress is keeping players eligible. Not at a program like Stanford. Meaningful degrees earned there. Posey. Try to make it two of two. Freshman Higgs with the rebound. Texas guards rebound so they are in there battling and getting the ball. And finding Lang for an easy two. So you got the size in the post. The undersized players perhaps able to rebound as Lang gets her first bucket of the game. But I just tell you that the players are engaged and they're, and they're giving the effort, because rebound is about effort. Just being yeah. in the right place, having the awareness to go get it. And one of the non-negotiables stressed since jump with Karen Aston here at the University of Texas. You know, Texas will live with that with uh, Erica McCall taking a jump shot. You know, she's got to be a little bit more aggressive, maybe put her on the floor and keep herself involved. You know, she gets a lot of those garbage buckets. She's the one yeah. rim running, getting out on the break. She's the one setting picks and diving. But somebody who puts up a lot of numbers and you know averages a double double. It's got to get herself involved. Get off, Texas with the 15 to 5 edge on the glass. We saw the end result of the second chance points on the last possession. Empress Davenport. Stanford fans are tired of seeing Empress Davenport. If you go back to last season's game, she was the one that had that layup in the final moments of regulation to send it to OT. The Texans eventually won, and there's Davenport again. In transition, kicks it to go, and Davenport has 13. Another miss for Stanford. Yeah, let's see if... Help side's a little late. I'm going to say that one's on the floor. No bucket. Here's the steal from Davenport. Well, miscommunication on Stanford part, but Davenport doing a nice job of using her body to make sure Roberson couldn't get swiped down on the basketball and gets the finish. That's what Davenport is going for. She's got a season high 13 points. Quite the ovation as she heads off. Just too shy of her career high of 15. You know, under controlled shots, you know, really taking good shots. She likes her matchup. And obviously was shooting it well. And that's what Karen Aston says is the biggest difference with this Texas team, the experience now at guard. Selena Rodrigo, Empress Davenport, Brady Sanders, they were thrown into the fire basically as freshmen. Now they've had some time to mature. One of the young ones there, LaShawn Higgs, with the travel. See if Stanford can get something going down here. Maybe involve... K Kelsey Lang in an on-ball pick, get her out, outside the paint, roll to the hole. Nice, nice call right there. Alana Smith with the height advantage on Higgs, took her right into the block. The freshman from Australia. First international player for Vanderbeer at Stanford. 
Lane. And if everybody remembers, Lang had a, a start that was, she was on fire last year. Yep. And, and Coach Aston said the other day that she really is kind of maybe turning, getting over that hump a little bit, having this practice time. And right there, nice pick and roll by McCall. Saturday on ESPN, it's Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. Seven foot, Jakob Pertle, and number 25, Utah face Coach K and eighth rank Duke. And a journey to the tourney game, presented by Sonic. You can see that Saturday, noon Eastern, on ESPN. McCall to the line, hits the first. Posey picked up her first foul. She goes to the bench, along with fellow freshman Jordan Hosey. Aaron McCall, Erica McCall, off to a fine start. Leading this team with more than 10 rebounds per game. Second in scoring at 14 points per game. And she has the block to add to the box score. And they went at, you know, that went at Samuelson right there. Davenport liked the matchup. They tried to get something. You know, go, go with the hot hand. But great defense. Stanford only one of six from three-point range. Samuelson tries to change that, doesn't get anything. Samuelson called for the foul. And those hand touches, you know, everybody knows the, the rules, and you got to be, be careful about that. But I think I'd like to see McCall attack Lang off the dribble. You know, right now, shooting a three ball, they're being contested. Texas doing a nice job being in their face. Would love to see her be more aggressive off the bounce to put pressure on their defense. Thompson almost. Was able to take that one away from Rodrigo. Reed Taylor back in the game for Texas. And again, you see Stanford's help side. Texas needs to swing the basketball, make that defense move. Seven on the shot clock. Grady Sanders. Looks like McCall affected that shot. I think that was a block shot by. Ah. Now they're going to say. Nice. Wait a second. Yeah, it definitely looked like McCall got a piece here. I thought it was a. I, if I was a player, I'd probably be saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's you our have, ball. It's our ball. We have one second. on the shot clock. Well, at least there's an opportunity. And this would be discussed at this point in time. It was the right read by Sanders, too, though. Understanding that if you watch this game, you'll see Stanford. You have everybody in the paint and, and on one side. And she drives, tries to pull up before she runs into the help. It's like a... Yep, and got they're deflected. gonna say it was a block. We got that one right. The <laughs> eyes of Katie Smith. <laughs> Hawk-like. Bree <laughs> Taylor. The robber. In one second, plenty of time for Taylor. Nice read, but nice preparation by the coaching staff. Understanding short clock, defense really didn't expect it. Got it over the top, nice put in. Good elevation from Taylor, one of the most explosive athletes on this Texas team. Stanford looking for their rhythm, out of sorts, but McCall still makes something happen off the feed from Thompson. Great hands, great hands to try to gather that in traffic. Doesn't have to be pretty, does it? Not at all. Sanders harassed by Roberson. McCall with the rebound off the Taylor miss. And Stanford put together a run. Texas staying in man. Thompson too strong. Rebound, Taylor. Thompson hasn't had many easy looks. They've been, nope. they've been in her space. Oh, 
Texas shooting 54%. Texas, again, still needs to attack. Either for the shot or the fine, but create something for your teammates. Rodrigo trapped Taylor. Two on the clock. She got it off and missed the shot. McCall with the rebound. Good defense from the Stanford Cardinal. McPhee pump fake. And McCall wide open. And she gets the bucket and the foul. But Empress Davenport has been the play. Lead the charge for Texas. She has a season high 13 points, closing in on the career high. 60% from the field, pacing Texas to the 31 24 lead. In five. With all due respect, I don't think so. Texas up 31 24. <laughs> because of the performance of Empress Davenport, and she's usually the lockdown defender. And that's what's great about Texas, is because they have multiple people at any point that can, can be the man. And right now, it's Davenport. They like her matchups. She's shooting the ball well. They're going to ride her until she goes cold. Could be somebody totally different in the second half or in the next four minutes. Nicole cannot convert to make it a three-point play. Fantastic move to the bucket from the freshman, LaShawn Higgs. X, I watched her play. She has the Euro step. She had a nice quick drop behind the back right there and her back, behind the back dribble and a little hang time to go ahead and get that foul. But one thing also that Stanford I know is Higgs is probably not going to pass it a whole lot. So <laughs> when she has the basketball, really commit on defense and make her make tough shots without foul. Higgs misses the first attempt. Freshman from Round Rock, Texas, Cedar Ridge High School. Preseason. Big 12 freshman of the year. She's coming off her first career start against Arkansas Little Rock. Lobosi just threw that one away, but it's off the hands of Hicks. She had to give that one up to Lily Thompson. Give it to her, because Amani Boyette was in that corner, would have had to run at her, and she would have gone right by her to the hole. Gotta let that ball get it out of your hands sometimes. Did the Cardinal look like a team that have not played in two weeks at this point? I don't feel like that. I, I do feel like they're playing pretty well. They're just trying to figure out. Texas, give Texas credit. They don't, they don't make yeah. life easy. And give Especially you what right you want. there on the glass. Right. They, they're going to they're gonna clean up those boards. Monty Boyette back in the game. Higgs lets it fly. Hangs her head a little bit. That one settled past everything. Transition three for McPhee. And here come the Stanford Cardinals. Only their second make from three-point range. And that's where you can get open threes is on, is on the break because people aren't used to guarding the three-point line when they get back in transition defense. Stanford creating the turnover. McPhee queuing up again. Back-to-back -back threes and Stanford right back in the ball game. What a run for the Stanford Cardinal. Defense leading to offense as McPhee goes back-to-back. -back. This. Welcome back to the Irwin Center. Lowell Galindo here with Katie Smith. And Katie, this is what makes Stanford so dangerous. Just when you think you're running away, here come the Cardinals. Three ball is the equalizer, but the best way to get it, if you can't find a way in half court, is in transition. Once you see one go down, the next one is easy. Especially with McPhee. She can get hot at a career high 24 points off the bench and a win against Cal last season. So despite the fact she's averaging four points per game, look out for the sophomore. That one was set up with defense as they hounded Boyette as soon as she got the basketball in the post. And there is another turnover. Later tonight on ESPN, don't miss Sports Center at night with Jay Harris and John Anderson. They'll wrap up all the action from week 14 in the NFL and close out the weekend in sports. End your day on a highlight with Sports Center at night right here on ESPN and also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Johnson with the miss on the three point attempt. Texas holding that two point lead as we head to the final two minutes of the first half. <laughs> She can do that. She doesn't take a lot of them. Very selective. But when she takes her time, can knock it down. She's got range. Now two of four. 
the three-point range on the season. And Thompson hasn't found her range nope. yet. She's trying to get one of those long balls to go down. Final two minutes of the first half. Always critical. Again, you see the help side by Stanford. Watch Five on the clock. And there it is. The defense from Roberson. And from McNall. Coming up at the half, Chris Carter and Kara Lawson will get you up to speed on the Jeep halftime report. Kara will break down her team player and freshman to watch for the Pac-12 and ACC. Don't miss Jeep halftime report. And really nice job by Stanford of understanding when to go double boy yet, when to go get your hands in there. It's not the dribble, but right there. Another good late clock inbounds play. Execution, it's a simple pick to picker. Everyone runs it on every level. Gotta communicate either switch or get through. They've done that with one second on the clock. That bucket from Jose with two on the clock. And Stanford is just being limited to one and done at this point on the offensive side. But here's that inbound. As you see, a pick, up pick, and then an in pick. But again, either lack of communication or readiness, or at the end of the day, just switch if you're in trouble. Don't give up a layup on an out of bounds. Roberson with the foul. Sets up a bonus situation. So one of the changes to the rules this season. The end of the one and one. So Davenport with two free throws here. And if she makes this, Davenport will tie her career high with 15 points. And she does. Thompson weaving through traffic. Kelsey Lane with the foul. A nice transition play. It's a little guard wing action where the guards dribble at each other, dribble exchange, come off an on ball right there. You see maybe a little bit of pressure. There you go. She's pressing a little bit, wants to kind of get a couple buckets to go, but ended up getting the foul call and get to the line. Makes the first. That's number two on Lynn. And we'll bring Amani Boyette back into the game. At the end of the day, she has to do that. Lily Thompson, Roberson, there's a lot on their shoulders to create for themselves and for others to get people shots. Gets them both. Lily Thompson, the MVP of the Gulf Coast Showcase. And 21 points per game, six assists per game. Also the Pac-12 Player of the Week. It was the last time that Stanford was in action. Turnaround from Boyette, no good. Wrestling for the rebound, but it's going to go out of bounds off Texas. A really solid defense. I think McCall doesn't you know, shine the ball in her hand a lot, but she does a nice job of, of pushing Boyette off the block, and then when she's trying to make a move, just staying between her and the basket, making him try to make a tough shot. So excellent defense by McCall. Final 45 seconds of action in the first half. Fee got into a little trouble, got out of it by finding Thompson. The kick, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Trying to do the right thing. Just have to give that ball up a little sooner to avoid that charge. That's Hosey getting the body in the right spot. Just a slight difference in the game clock and the shot clock. Texas can get the final shot if they want it. And again, Davenport with the basketball, riding the hot hand, seeing what she, let her, let her try. Why not? Career high 15 points, six of 10. Brady Sanders picking up the clock. Good defense. McCall with the block. And we are going to the half. Still within reach for the Stanford Cardinal. But it is Texas with a hot shooting. 52% in the first half, holding the seven-point lead into intermission. After this short break, Chris Carter and Kara Lawson will join you in the studio for the Jeep Halftime Report. At the half, it's Texas up on Stanford, 39-32.
closing in on the start of the second half here at the Irwin Center as Texas tries to extend its record to 8 and 0 on the season with a win against the Stanford Cardinals. Logan Lindo back here courtside with Katie Smith. We build this as a battle of two very good defenses, tied for 15th. Both of these teams in field goal percentage defense, but so far, Empress Davenport, six of ten from the field, she's getting what she wants. She really is, and I, I think she likes the matchup, but she's also making good decisions. You see on the break, no one's back. Go ahead and attack again. One person back, she's giving ground. I take the pull up. And this is something, her confidence right now, again, reading the defense, they all clear out, and then she goes. And again, just under control is what I've seen today for Davenport. And on the other side, Lily Thompson right now attacking all ball. Good pitch set, raising up, knocking down a jump shot. She's got to get more involved. And it also, it's, it's on her, but it's also on her teammates to help her get involved. And that's get her, get her the ball on the break a little bit for an easy bucket. Maybe, you know, penetrate kick to her. You know, really try to draw her defense and make her life easier so she can start feeling it a little bit. Probably the stat that stands out most from the first half, zero offensive rebounds for the Stanford Cardinal. So even though they're shooting decent against this Texas defense, 41%, no second chance opportunities when there's a miss. Hey, kudos to, to Texas to boxing out, because Stanford is, McCall is a, a heck of a rebounder. They're going after it, but Texas disciplined and, and boxing out each time. Stanford opens up the third quarter with a good look from McCall and rebound. Boyette pushes to Davenport. It's going to skip it to Brooke McCarty. In and out. Offensive rebound and put back by Amani Boyette. She's got seven. Yeah, not a bad pass by Davenport, but I thought she was going to take that 15 footer. But great job by Boyette of getting down there and cleaning it up. And the defense on the other side as she blocks that attempt from Thompson. Thompson gets back up and has the awareness to put it back in. You know, good challenge by Thompson, but probably needs to pull up on Boyer. Going all the way to the hole, trying to challenge her, you're going to get a block shot. But again, good hustle, first offensive rebound. Boyette did not play in the Texas win against the Cardinal a season ago. That speaks to the ability of her teammates, considering they had an equally hot start a year ago, and they did that primarily without Boyette. If you're paying attention, there's two people that went to help, and that's why Texas had an open player underneath a bucket. McCall, this time she gets the pull up, Jay. I don't mind a Jay, but I still would like to see McCall put it on the floor, pump fake, take one hard dribble, get into the body of the post player, and you can finish and get to the free throw line. Boyette has done a good job staying out of foul trouble. She has one foul. Laying on the bench for two. McCarty step back. She's got it. Brooke McCarty, four or five shooting, eight points. You really don't, she plays so much more, I guess, older than what she is. I mean, she's only a sophomore, but just with yeah. her poise and her comfort out there. Big time recruit for Texas a year ago. As that's one of the aggressive takes you were looking for from Kylie Johnson. I really like that. I, I just think it's, they're not great jump shooters, but I just think the bigs need to challenge a little bit more. The guards, they're tough. They, Texas has great defenders and they really hound them. But these bigs need to loosen them up a little bit, get those guards off to have to help. Maybe, maybe kick, but heck, get to the free throw line. Johnson does exactly that. Hits the first. Kylie was a late change to the starting five. Making her first start since her freshman season. She did play a career high 27 minutes against Missouri State in the first game down in Florida in tournament action. Well, yeah, no good. But Taylor getting after that rebound. Goes out of bounds off the Stanford Cardinal. I mean, great post up by Boyer. Show, showed her numbers to that perimeter player. They got it to her. Just couldn't get it to go down. Cardi, kick out Davenport. He was looking to break that tie of a career high. Just 15. He was looking for 17 there. 
When you're looking at a third opportunity on this possession for Texas. Gotta get that ball. You gotta get down there. Can't keep letting them have other opportunities to get a score if you're trying to get back in this. Reward yourself. Johnson, the call with the defense. Boyette turns it over. Seven point lead for Texas. Still well within striking distance for this Cardinal team. Samuelson accidentally goes five hole through Boyette. Stanford okay. Five seconds on the clock. Samuelson. Pure. Samuelson has her second. Those are not easy shots to come off of a, a handoff, step behind it, and knock down a three. But this is what Stanford can do. Now, Stanford right now, we're about almost four minutes into this game, three and a half. McCall needs to run, run, run. The bigs for Stanford need to run. Boyette calling for it. They have three defenders on her, but she's going to go to the line. So this is a Cardinal team that lost Bonnie Samuelson, but Carly picking up for her sister. Again, short clock, time's winding down. She gets the handoff, steps behind it, and nails it. Her older sister, fantastic three-point shooter for the Stanford team. Still a very young Stanford team. First time in quite a while that Tara Vanderveer does not have a starter. It is a senior. First time since 0203. And how she described what she has cooking, if you will, with the Stanford team. <laughs> Tara, with her Taraism, said it's, we're a cake in the oven. We have all the ingredients. And we have these ingredients. We have some decent ingredients. We have to crank up the heat and maybe add a little bit, but she's like, we're a cake in the oven. That was a really nice statement, as you see. Need to add some rebounding Taylor cleaning that to up. that ingredient. Mm -hmm. Second chance point for Bree Taylor. Robeson cannot oh, hold on to that one as that pass from Samuelson sails high. Only the sixth turnover for the Stanford Cardinal. Both teams doing a nice job of you know, taking care of the basketball. At times, both of these teams will turn over the basketball. Davenport gives up the three for a better look. And there is the career high. Stands alone now at 17 points for Empress Davenport. Davenport and McCall, the only players in double-digit scoring for these two teams. Thompson loses the handle. Texas basketball. You see, close out. Samuel says closing out on Davenport. She puts it on the floor, but then she pulls up short because she sees the help. Great con concentration to knock that down because she has somebody right under her. And that's what you get with the senior guard. The awareness, the experience. Played a lot of basketball games here for the University of Texas. Taylor throws that one away, looking for Imani Boyette. But just when Stanford thinks they can make a run, Davenport gets Texas back in front. Well, this is a Stanford team that is learning from the best. Had an opportunity to share some practice space with the Warriors as they practice at Stanford before a preseason game in October. And it goes beyond this. Coach Vanderveer and her staff, they've also spent some time watching the Warriors practice. She says watching them, it's kind of like a clinic happening every two or three nights on television. It really is, and they've, they've been trying to watch a little bit. You know, you always learn. You never stop learning in, in any field, and that's the same with coaching, but they, they're a little bit more guard-oriented. And you look at the Warriors, their guards are, are their focal point, and their yeah. bigs are running hard and, and, and dribbling at and, and creating. That's kind of how they're set up. So we asked with the Warriors, would they ever lose? Now, after the loss, will they ever win again? Yeah, right, that's, that's going to be the question now. Yeah. I think they're going to be okay. McCall! Just fine. She slips past Boyette. Now watch her foul. 
You know, you gotta give McCall, I, I know I, I, I like McCall. There's, there's not one thing run for her, but she is involved, she never stops working, and she's always there doing her job. Taylor going to the line. And here is Erica McCall. You see a nice read, just floats right behind. Amani loses her, boy, it loses her a little bit, but nice job and good vision by Smith. Erica McCall is the co-captain of Team USA in the World University Games in South Korea. A lot of valuable experience there in the offseason. As it's McCarty at the line. And the coach has talked about it, her confidence. You know, she's averaging a double-double. She has five double-doubles this year. You know, when she's had only two in her, her whole career prior. So um, just her energy and I think understanding just how hard you play every night and playing with those, that talent, it just gives you that uh, chip, chip on your shoulder. Like, yeah, let's go out and do this every every time. And another year to work on the game and improve. Always. McCarty hits two. It's a nine-point lead for Texas. Thompson and another good take. Love the way she wrapped that ball when she went through traffic and still got it up. So Stanford has now made five straight from the field after missing five consecutive shots. Thompson cranking up the defensive intensity. Taylor, this is the size mismatch, and you see the shot affected. She's trying to take it up over six foot three. She's got, some, Smith. She's got some bounce on it. She got that yeah. thing off, just shorted it a little bit. We have to follow through strong when you're jumping that high. Stanford's got something going here. Get some easy looks at the bucket and putting them down. Brady Sanders with the foul. And here's that last bucket from Lily Thompson. And again, the option, she's going in. You saw her cuff it, almost hug that thing so she can get through traffic, even if they're swiping at her, and then she still got it up with the left. Quick first step to get past Davenport. Yeah, she's, she's got to just keep attacking in all ways for her. Open look for Smith. No good. But there's an offensive rebound. Stanford desperate for one of those. See if they can capitalize on it. Seven-point lead for Texas. Roberson, the open look. And once again, the Cardinals have found themselves back in this game via the three ball. Great job by the guard, by Thompson, getting in there, drawing the defense, and finding her teammates. Roberson with her first hit from three-point distance. Grady Sanders, way off. Cardinal looked like well-oiled machine over the past three possessions. They've closed the gap. McPhee in and out. Would have been huge for Stanford. You got to get back and lock down on defense. Roberson, intense defense on Brooke McCarty and Karen Aston wants to talk about it. Stanford, they were down by double digits, but the three-pointers are starting to fall. And the Cardinal finding themselves back in the game, only down by four with two minutes left in third. I've been working. Electric atmosphere in the Irwin Center a day ago. Javon Felix, did he beat it? Hold the celebration. Check this one out, and upon further review, said yes, indeed, Javon Felix beat the buzzer, sending Texas to the upset win against number three, North Carolina. Shaka Smart with his first signature win as a head coach of the University of Texas. Karen Aston has had a few of those in her four seasons here in Austin. This would be another one, but Tara Vanderveer. Trying to get some momentum for her team as well. Right there with Selena Rodriguez with her first three-point bucket of the game. Great, great shot by Rodrigo, but nice job of coming out of timeout, taking your time, stepping in your shot, knocking it down. But that's what Coach Aston 
Last year, they, they got really high and won a couple, you know, won some games and got ranked, and then they kind of went down the tubes. And they want to be consistent. They don't want to get too high and not too low. So that's where they're, that's where they're working on. Going to business, it's, it's business every single day. Turnover, Stanford, all going back to Texas. Impressive with Selena Rodrigo to consider. She shot 25% as a freshman. She's 50% now. She doesn't take a lot. She's not out no. here. She's not sh sh shooting just threes to get them off. She takes great looks, gets her feet under her, and strokes it. But as a freshman, the shooting was so poor that a lot of times opposing teams just really started to lay off, not defend her at all. And you have to, you have to be able to knock down some type of shot to spread the defense where it does suck in and it takes away things for other people. Well, Cardinal have had a few runs, but every time there's been an answer, and the answer has included Empress Davenport. What's gotten into her? I'll tell you what, she, she must like the Cardinal. But she is something, today is her day. She's had her share big moments. Layup that sent Texas to overtime against Stanford on the road a year ago. Also had the game winner against Texas A&M. Davenport has another one. 21. <laughs> That's not easy. That's not easy. Pull up on a dime. Somebody in your face. She is no longer a defensive stopper. She is a sharp shooter. Rebound Stanford. Thompson tries to draw the foul. And that will end the third quarter of play. Texas running into the fourth quarter behind a career performance from Empress Davenport. Previous career high was 15. When you got Selena Rodrigo hitting like that and Davenport adding a career high 21, good things are happening in Austin. Katie, disappointed. You had your moment to dance with the Irwin Center crowd, and you passed it up. Texas up on Stanford, 59-48. Only two matches left before Abby Wambach retires as the U.S. Women's National Team victory tour continues tonight with the first game of a back-to-back -back series against China at University of Phoenix Stadium. Tonight at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN2. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN. And you can log on to ESPNW.com. Watch Julie Fowdy sit down with Abby Wambach to find out what's next for Abby. And you've claimed, Abby, that's your favorite. She is. That was my, I enjoyed watching her play. Probably because she was a, a physical presence and uh, didn't back down. McCarty. Great execution by Texas. They got the look they wanted. They ran a little play for, for McCarty to get that three. Just couldn't get it to go down. McPhee with the drive right into Boyette. Boyette coming up strong, laying in transition, slips out of her hands. You know, you see more and more players really not fouling on drives, you know, really making people make shots. We're, we're taught all the time when we try to teach our players, it's just make them earn it. Get your hands straight up, wall up, just make them try to make these tough shots and then go get a rebound. So if I told you Amani Boyette would have eight points, Kelsey Lane would have four, how would you feel about the Texas chance of winning this game? Nice rainbow shot by Kylie Johnson right there. But honestly, like with Texas, I'd be all right with it because they're guards. They they have a lot of people who can carry them. Now, on the other hand, saying that Lily Thompson has only had Great 10 point. points would be something of a, a dis you know, something that you look at the game like, oh, they might be struggling because they, they depend on her a little bit more. They have more people. Texas, their depth is uh, very, very special. Lena Rodrigo is in the scrum under the bucket trying to get that rebound. To go the way of Stanford here. And Texas is not getting any worse in their depth when Ariel Atkins comes oh, back. Great point. And that gives them a little more size, size at the guard and a good score. It's just, I mean, that's a, that's a whole nother piece that they haven't even had. Yeah, Atkins was the leading scorer for Texas in Big 12 play. It has an ankle injury she's coming back from. Expected to be back around the start of Big 12 play. Shot clock winding down. Roberson back door. Up. 
Bryan can't get the friendly roll as McPhee tried to make it happen. Texas is just hounding the guards. And as you see here, Longhorn defense against their ranked opponents. They're keeping them about 15 points underneath their average for Tennessee, 40 some points with Mississippi That's State. Incredible. Just really putting the pressure on teams to try to do something they're not used to. You're yeah. taking things away from those teams and, and obviously you're doing that tonight here with Stanford so far. Mississippi State is currently ranked seventh in points per game with 85. Texas held them to 47. Boyette getting the touch. The feisty Johnson in there to force the held ball. That's something Boyette has to understand. That much time, if she has the ball for that long of a time, somebody's probably going to go down and dig and maybe get a hand on it. So you have to be strong with the basketball. she got to you know, keep it high and then find people or then make her move. Kylie Johnson with the pressure on that turnover. And Johnson gives it away. They're going to have back to back help ball. Texas gets it right back. Kylie Johnson missed the read. They came together. Thompson set a pick for Roberson. Roberson is the one that came off open. Johnson needs to make that, make the correct read, see who's open. Thompson been hobbled as she gets up. Most experienced, most vocal player on the court for Stanford, Lily Thompson. And one of the hardest workers, is, as Tara was telling us yesterday. Working on Davenport right now. Hesitation from McCarty. Get out. McCall with the swat. You can tell Stanford's trying to pick up the intensity. It's trying to create. And then on the other end, you see him crashing the boards. Obviously, I'm sure at halftime, the coaches are telling him we haven't had a, an offensive rebound yet. Yeah. So they've been they've been cracking it, running into each other for old boys. So they're just trying to pick themselves up and try to get, get into this nine-point lead. They've looked good in spurts. And every time they get something going, there is a response. Rodrigo. Boyette rebound. And it's going to stay with Texas. If you saw that young players, you saw the offensive players boxing out the defense for the old boys. If you already have inside position, go ahead and box out. You can box out on offense, too. Nice move from Taylor. Johnson thought she had the block. It's going to go down as a foul, and Taylor is going to shoot, too. Taylor hits the first. Johnson goes to the bench with her third foul. Carly Samuelson into the game. Samuelson a threat. Shooting a three ball, two of four in the game so far. Taylor hits both. Texas up by 11 with seven and a half left. And Robinson sends McCarty to the court. That's going to fire off this Texas team. And that's, that's, that's been going on all day. They've been annoying each other. They've been, you know, hounding each other on both sides. And, you know, finally got it got the best that McCarty won that one. The Rovers isn't trying to get some of those herself, but they, they've been going at it. Boyette the sweeping drive. And McCarty scrambling. For the rebound and draws the foul as well. When the five foot four guard is running down loose balls like that, you know the rebounding edge going your way. I mean, there's a toughness, and I think they, they take the personality of Coach Aston. I mean, she, I've watched practice last year, and she is, they get after it. Do you know what and that's her players call over. it? What's that? Kink Aston. I, I can see that. But I just think it does translate. I think there's a toughness to this Texas Longhorn team. She does not agree. And why would she? Ah, uh, you can see that elbow clearly getting down to the bridge of Lee Taylor's nose. And that's that whole lower defensive box. If you if you are in that area, you can take a charge within that restricted area. So if she was there and, and you know got the elbows out a little bit too much. Again, as players, we 
We don't always think that we, <laughs> we might be not. Heat <laughs> of the moment. McCarty. Rebound Samuelson. Six and a half left to play. The drive by Sneezik. She draws the foul. Well, let's check out what this Texas defense has been able to do on the season. The field goal percentage is the same, but the big difference has been shooting from three-point range. It really has. I mean, they're in their space. And, and Tara even said yesterday they want to shoot threes and layups. That's yeah. what they want. They're threes and layups. So right now, the three balls, that's a big, when they, when the percentage is that low against Stanford, that's taking a chunk of their offense away. Flip McCarty to the bench. And Sean Higgs, the freshman, back in action. Got to make these easy buckets right now for yep. Stanford, but right now, you got to get stops. Got to get down there and maybe get a stop and get an easy bucket, a run out in, in transition. You know, they have a, in the half court set, Texas is solid. Their defense is really, really good. Posey, feet to Lane. Posey with the assist, Lane with the bucket. The lead's up to 13. Good job by Lang to keep moving. And an offensive foul on Stanford. So even with the struggles in this game, Coach Vanderveer very positive about the outlook on this team. Told us a day ago that right now this team is not nearly at the point where Final Four teams were at. But also said, by the end of the season, who knows? They definitely have the talent. And what she loves is she has workers on this team. And she does. She she understands she's young. You know, they don't have a senior in the starting lineup. And you have a couple on the bench. And they don't contribute a lot with almost a turnover there. Yeah. But she does like the pieces, the camaraderie, the work ethic. Finally gets to take that lid off for the three ball. Lily Thompson knocking it down. Gonna need a few of those to keep this run going. But she really likes her team and understands next year she has a nice recruiting class coming in to add to that. But they just want to keep building and, and improving. Thompson with their first three of the game. Leads the Pac-12 with 3.3. Three point three point makes per game. Nice and job. Lee Taylor. Yeah. We call for the offensive foul. Yeah, that's, that's a stop. That's another stop. Yeah. Boyette back in the game along with Kelsey Lang. We'll see what Texas does defensively with this look. Coach Aston told us that some of her looks it sets up playing zone defensively a little more because she thinks this is their best offensive look when Lang and Boyette are on the court together, but not the best defensively. Yeah, it depends on who you're playing against. If you have some mobile, you know, post players like to put it on the floor, then it may be trouble for them. But, you know, they, they're they going to communicate and keep getting better. Remember, Lang is just kind of getting her groove back with her wrist, after her wrist surgery. Under 10 on the clock. Thompson, aggressive drive for you. From the other side of the paint to get that rejection. Making it tough. If you want to enter the paint, Boyette with the swat. Takes us up by Tim. Saturday on ESPN, it's Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers as Utah tries to bounce back from a loss against Wichita State as they go off against Coach K and eighth ranked Duke. In a journey to the tourney game presented by Sauna. Utah Duke from Madison Square Garden, Saturday at noon on ESPN, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Lord Lindo back here with Katie Smith. Katie, what does Stanford need to get going their way here in the final four minutes, 46 seconds? Just have a little pace to their offense. Got to find a way to get somebody open. And, and again, I think their their post players need to be more aggressive when it comes to looking for their shot. I'm not talking jump shots. I'm talking about being involved, putting the ball on the, the floor a little bit. Rodrigo with the rebound after the McPhee miss. Hot streak momentarily. Peak check. 
silenced for Empress Davenport. Transition three ball. Got it. And McPhee has been one of those players keeping them in it really with good. her three-point shooting. And great decision by Lily Thompson. Attacked. Somebody stepped and stopped her, and she kicked it. If that person wouldn't have left the three ball, she probably would have had a layup. Stanford needs to stop. I give Texas credit. They're, they're, they're patient right now. They're not in a hurry. If there isn't a quick shot, they're not taking it. They're going to run offense. Boyette on the turnaround miss. And that's going to stay with Texas. As you see, Thompson being able to get out on the break. Davenport steps towards her, gives up the three. Honestly, probably stay with that three-point shooter. Allow Thompson to try to challenge the rim. Hopefully, your help your other teammates are back there to contest. Into the final four minutes of the game. And again, great job by Texas taking time off the clock. Davenport. This is back-to-back -back shots, and Stanford up and at him going the other way. Thompson slowing it down. Another open look from McPhee. She's got back-to-back three-pointers, has not missed from three-point range, and it's a four-point game. Stanford's been great in transition. They need to find need to find ways to continue to get stops and then get out and run. Nine-zip run for the Stanford Cardinal. And Nick Fee, we've seen her on multiple occasions go back-to-back -back three pointers on possessions. Again, transition. People aren't matched up. They don't have the correct people. You're watching the ball. Somebody stops at the three-point line and nails it. Rodrigo to the line. Roberson picks up her fourth foul. That'll be something to pay attention to here in the final 3-16. Dempsey's also in the bonus. Nothing, nothing to lose right now. Roberson, the pressure has to be put on to try to create something, the turnover, a bad pass. Rodrigo gets them both. This has been the story of the game. Cardinal, get hot, get close, cannot get over the hump. A nice fake by Roberson. Ball slips away. McCall trying to clean up. She gets the rebound. And Rodrigo called for the foul. Like the call by Stanford, it really was a one-on-one -on -one ISO. Trying to get by her man. If the big helps, you drop it to the big. If the guard helps in the corner, you have a three-point shooter. But a nice Euro step by Roberson. Thompson. Not sure what she was looking for there, but didn't get it, whatever the case. Not a good possession for the Cardinal. Rodrigo shakes Thompson. Look to Kelsey Lane. That ball goes out of bounds. Of course, the fans want a foul, but what's new? and see if Stanford can get a stop. And then get a bucket. That's also been a little tough to come by. The block by McCall. With that shot clock winding down. Now push tempo, they do better in transition. Go ahead and get out, try to attack them. Roberson with the drive, can't hit. Lane with the rebound. And Texas will slow it down. As we're in the final two minutes, Thompson all over Rodrigo. The officials letting him play. And then finally, too much contact from Thompson. And there's the defense from Lily Thompson. Tried to get that jump ball, tried to sneak in before the, you know, she started to move, and then, honestly, excellent defense until that last reach in. It, it, with the rules in the game, it's tough on players, and I think these guards do an excellent job of staying in, in quick guard space, moving their feet, 
not putting their hands on using their bodies. It's a challenge. And, and for these, both of these teams, for their guards to take that challenge and be up in that space, even though fouls are easy to come by. Both teams in the bonus. Rodrigo splits. Seven point lead. And you see Coach from Texas is say no threes. McCoy comes in front of the charge as Brooke McCarty, right place, right time. She felt that one. Really great anticipation by McCarty. He barely snuck up under there. Not McCall's fault. She's going hard to the basket, but good vision and awareness um, by McCarty to see her help. That's 6-3 versus 5-4, and 5-4 wins by putting the body on the line. McPhee picks up her second foul. Texas not shooting great from the field, just one of 13 in the fourth quarter. Davenport adding to her career performance. And again, right now, Stanford push the basketball, try to get something quick, whether it's going to the hole or finding a shooter. The most likely is probably going to be going to the hole. Roberson off balance and good. She had great control. She got up in the air to get herself square. Seven point lead, a minute 22 left. Stanford has been able to get within four multiple times in the second half, but not closer than that. Thompson rips that one away, and Davenport called for the foul. I mean, they're not going to stop playing. They got back in transition. McCarty got stuck on that baseline. As you see right here, they're hounding line, deflection, ends up with it, takes the little hit. And Thompson will shoot two. But McCarty has to be careful when she drove baseline. There's no vision. There's only one other person down there. And it's just, it's a, it's a tough place to be, especially on the break. Thompson now four of four from the line. It's a five point game. Bree Taylor to the bench. Amani Boyette back in. A little full court pressure here by Stanford to see if they can cause Texas to make an error. Go, go. Get the ten we got a timeout. Karen Aston. So five-point lead has been challenged multiple times, and it's been challenged because Stanford still in moments getting hot from three-point distance. When they can get space, they can knock them down. It's just a matter tonight. It hasn't been easy for them to get enough space to get their feet set and feel comfortable. It's been a little bit more rushed. But especially most of these threes have come in in transition throughout the ballgame. Only three of 11 in the first half. From three point range. See what they've done. Second half has been much better. Five of nine. Coach Vanderveer having a little conversation with the officiating crew. Yeah, it was a good call by a Texas coach to get that timeout so they didn't get a backcourt violation. I think Tara thought there was a travel. Green call for the foul. Brooke McCarty will go to the bench. That's Alex Green. Brooke McCarty on the line. And Brooke McCarty, two of two from the line. They make that three of three. Well, offensive defensive substitution. Let's see if Stanford has some type of set, like a transition set right now to get a quick bucket, whether it's a guard wing handoff to an on ball or maybe a flare for a three. See if they can get a quick shot. Reed Taylor takes the place of Amani Boyette. So Alex Green did her job. She got the foul, goes to the bench. McPhee back in the game. She's nice. a three point threat. Nice defense by Texas on that first action. McCall up and under. 
Rebound by McCall. That one goes out of bounds. Stanford will keep possession. 45.7 seconds left. Texas up by seven. Drawn for their third win against a ranked opponent this season after beating Tennessee and Mississippi State. Thompson pull up, got it. And a quick timeout by Vanderbilt. And again, Stanford was trying to get right here. Just got a little back pick. You get pressure, you got deflections. Again, hounding the basketball. You get an offensive foul just by being up there and harassing him. Again, being in the spot, putting out the effort to get there. And again, it's not only physically putting yourself there, but mentally seeing these things as they're happening. It's not that easy. Sometimes you get caught up in guarding your own players. So kudos to them tonight of really taking care of each other. Bill Jackson says one of the big difference with the team this season is that chemistry, taking care of each other. There's more voices, more players allowed to have a voice, as opposed to last season when there was one dominant voice. Becca Inapoli, obviously an important part of this program, but a very dominant player vocally. And now more players with more of a voice. Another quick foul, Rodrigo to the free throw line where Texas is 9 of 10 in the fourth quarter. It looks like Stanford is going to opt for the, the foul and try to extend the game and see if they can get a, you know, some three balls to go down and try to get back in it that way. You know, in Texas, that's something they haven't done real well all year is, is free throw shooting. I think on the season, they were 65%. So, you know, not a bad thought going in, you know, looking at the stats, you know, try to put them at the line. This is a Texas team coming off probably the poorest performance of the season on the road at Arkansas Little Rock. They actually trailed at half for the first time. Went scoreless in the third quarter, but outscored Arkansas Little Rock 31 to eight in the fourth. Here, a different story. They're just trying to hold on as Rodrigo gets the split. And they got the turnover. Little Rock, the ball back. Brooke McCarty, the jitterbug all over the place. McCall reaches in for the foul. And the Irwin Center appreciates the effort. Roberson didn't expect somebody to be in her face, especially when Texas is up. McCarty snuck in there. Got the basketball, and again, tonight, 10 for 13 from the line. But again, Stanford taking no chances. Got to take care of the basketball and go down and get a score. Taylor misses both, but Lowe, the rebound. And more free throws coming for Texas. That's tough right there for Stanford, just not finishing possessions when they have an opportunity to do so. What's next for Texas? Well, Kanisha's on Wednesday. An SEC matchup against Arkansas, December 30th, on the Big 12 play on the road at West Virginia. I mean, they've, they've gone through this preseason pretty well. But you know, the, see, when you come down to your conference in the Big 12, it's going to be a challenge day yeah. in and day out, no matter what the record is. It, you, you always, it's, it's that their place or whatever. Records don't always matter. Just got to show up every single night. Texas started 11-0 in the non-conference late a year ago. Three wins against the top 10. Then lost eight of their next 10 games. Also lost Mecca and Impali. As Lily Thompson is able to get the bucket. Stanford responds with a timeout. So the Cardinal, tough back-to-back -back games here. They will go back to California and then make another trip out east, take on the Tennessee Volunteers. They do. I mean, Tennessee, you know, is coming to their place. It's going to be a tough battle. You know, Tennessee's a team right now struggling, trying to figure out themselves. But, you know, with Stanford headed back, a solid effort today. I mean, it's, yes, they're down right now. with the slim possibility of getting back into it. But they have a, you know, they're, they're still building and still working to what they want to be. It's always tough to follow the legend. You hear it all the time. You don't want to be 
the coach that follows the legend. You want to be the coach that follows the coach that follows the legend. And that's what, you know, Tennessee right now is, it's just a, when you watch a play, it's just a, there's not much rhythm to it. Uh, trying to figure out who they are. They have some new pieces, you know, Diamond the Shields is in the lineup. They have some solid bigs, but it doesn't seem like they're using them as well as they should. Um, it's just not that, that uh, balance between the guards and the posts. This one will be decided at the free throw line if Texas can continue to hit. Nothing to worry about here for the Horns. What do you think the ultimate upside is for this Texas team from what you've seen so far? When they, I, I like, I like Texas. I think that they top ten for sure. Is it top five? I think there's UConn, and I think there's a, a group of teams that could literally beat each other depending on the night. So, I do believe top ten. And I think they can make a, a nice run. I think that's something that they're probably chomping at the bit to do. Um, yeah. You know, to get this team and get Texas back on that stage. Um, but I do think that they'll be making a nice deep run into the you know NCAA tournament if nothing crazy happens. Another timeout by Coach Vanderveer. And for the Cardinal, we've talked a lot with Coach, and she said that this is a team that has a lot of potential down the road next season as well. They started five juniors in this game. They're all coming back for another season. How about your top seeds? It's early. Your projections. <laughs> Bracketology they, already. They Love are. It. And, and, you know, the NCAA is going to start putting out, you know, top ten. Um, throughout when it comes in February, there's going to be three times where they're going to put out their top tens. And as you see right now, my number one seeds in order, you have UConn. I'm not sure many will argue with me with that one. Nope. The rest maybe, but South Carolina, who Don, you know, Staley has done an amazing job with that program, and, and they made it to the NCAA, deep run into the NCAA last year. And then Baylor and Maryland. I think Maryland has a, a nice mix of guard and post. And then my number two seeds, Notre Dame, my top, Oregon State, Ohio State, and obviously I have Texas in there. So, you know, Notre Dame might have dropped for some, may look like, oh, you're crazy. I just think with some of their, Taylor, Taylor Reimer um, leaving the team, and then you have Turner still has a banged up shoulder. I just think their team is gonna maybe hit a couple bumps in the road as they go. And you see that Oregon State team there, they were picked number one in the preseason Pac-12 coaches poll. That snapped a streak of 15 straight years that Stanford was number one in that preseason coaches poll. And I think Tara has the right attitude of just keep building. You know, expectations. Keep she's making. Not, she's not sure what, what the expectations are. We just want to keep becoming a better basketball team and keep building. And with her experience, the experience of this entire Stanford coaching staff, they're going to be okay. So Davenport putting the hands up. He's going for the foul. He's going to have a little conversation. I think they're going to see if it's a two or a three. Yep. See if she had stepped inside the line. Yeah, it looks like she gets the Got him behind. both feet behind that line. Empress Davenport, though, really stealing the show. Came into this game, previous career high, 15 points. Shows up, shows out, 23 points. 9 to 17 shooting. Really, she had that type of game consistently from the first quarter. She showed that she was going to be the, the player to carry this Texas team. And she did, and it, it's, it, it's just nice to see, you know, your seniors obviously have a good night. But then to have an efficient night, not just have a good night, but then to, to, to do it in a way that your coach is happy with. Yeah. You know, you shoot the ball well, you make good decisions. And again, she did it in a variety of ways. Understood when to attack the hole, when to pull up. And then obviously she got on the boards too. She had six rebounds and then knocked out three throws. Thompson with the first. See the line there. Davenport will take that all day. Came in the stand, shooting 27% from the field. In, in the next game, it may be somebody else, and that's what Texas is, is such a, it's, it's a bonus for them, is because it literally could be somebody every single night, somebody different carrying the load. And Thompson now has at least 20 points in five of eight games for Stanford. You see the great offensive rebound. 
by Smith, but I'm just a little bit impatient. You know, she's she's a youngster. and just kind of threw it out of bounds and said, hey, let me take my time and get a shot. And we're gonna have another foul and another free throw. Hope you like free throws. But the best way to continue to get better is through experience. It may not be pretty and it may not be fun at sometimes when you're thrown out there. But it ultimately will you'll learn something from it and then have that confidence when you're in that situation again. Rodrigo now in double digits with 10 points. Two of two on that trip. And Texas is 16 of 20 from the free throw stripe in the fourth quarter. Helping to ice this one as Thompson cannot get that one to go. And the final second. As Texas hits up another win against the nationally ranked opponent. In this case, 14th ranked Stanford. They did it with defense. They did it with Empress Davenport. Career high 23 points. Usually known as the defensive stopper. But in this game, she was a showstopper offensively. She really was and started the game that way. And then different people contributed at different times, but they knocked down free throws at the, down the stretch. They put up a good fight when Stanford tried to make runs. You know, give Stanford credit for as young as they are. They came in with poise and really tried to, to put a good show on. Next up for the Stanford Cardinal, road trip to Tennessee. As for Texans, they will try to make it 9-0 against Kinesis. Empress Davenport, career high 23. Texas with the win, 77 to 69. Coming up next, the 2015 Reebok Women's CrossFit Games. For Katie Smith, I'm Paul Duendo, and our entire ESPN crew saying so long from Austin. Have a great Sunday.